Wednesday, August 14th, 2024, and this is the Crow Board Workshop. Uh, order at six o'clock. And do we have a motion to adopt the agenda? Motion to adopt. Um, can I ask a question? If you second it. I'll second it. Now you can ask a question. Okay. Um, on action item A, was this approved? For a waiver, or does it still have to be approved? The event itself? Yeah, they're looking for a fee waiver before they confirm. So, can can we just get rid of this and send it back to the committee? Because of the timing of the when the committees end this, and for them to give their vendors or find another venue, we need to kind of have a yay or nay. I think it's fine for us to decision it and move on. Okay. I'm okay with it. See you later. Don. And he had an online discussion about it. Okay. Yeah. Recommendation. Don, Jared, any amendments to the agenda? None for me. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Presentations, five minutes. We have two guests in the audience Stephanie Bradbury and Isabel Sanders. So, Stephanie, would you like to come up and uh, Talk to us about your project. Which one? Oh, you're welcome to come up here. Come on, right up here. Do we want to move the microphone or are we good? good. Okay. Right. Speak loudly. We yes. only have one microphone. <laughs> Limited budget. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate you making time in your schedules to accommodate me. My name is Stephanie Bradbury. I attend Celebration High School. It's my senior year this year. I'm part of the IB program, and it's a rigorous program focused on creating skilled scholars to help advance their college careers and later in life uh, getting jobs. As, as part of our IB program, we are responsible for having a CAS project with focuses on bettering our community and giving back to them for what they have given to us over the years. I've lived in Celebration for 11 years, and this town really means a lot. Uh, at Celebration High School, I'm a part of the Celebration High School swim team since my freshman year, and I'm also the captain. I am also part of the Celebration Cyclone Swim Club outside of the school. Um, as you can see from these pictures up here, uh, this is part of the coaches room at Lakeside Pool. Uh, there's a couple of them, different angles of the room itself. My proposition for the CAS project would be to uh, remodel this room, reorganize it to make it look better for the community, as well as inspire some community members to use the pool or join some of the organizations that are hosted there. This group, uh, this project would take about three weeks, uh, one week to clean and prep the room, uh, to reorganize it and put some new storage in if you need things there. The second weekend would be painting the room a shade of purple for the Celebration High School and for the club team. And the third weekend would be for providing any amenities that the town or the organizations might need. Do you have any questions for me? You're going to paint the walls purple? Yes. So I think so. So thank you for coming out. Uh, yes. No, I, I appreciate you, you know, uh, coming in front of the board on this. So uh, just a couple of, of logistical questions. So the um, request that you're making of the Homeowners Association, which is which is what Pro is, is essentially permission to do this. You're yes. not necessarily looking for um, additional funding or labor or materials or any of that nature, correct? That would be supplied by your project. Yes. Okay. All right, and then um, Laura, I know there was a question too on the existing usage of the room, if it's used for anything else, and then also on an opinion from 
legal for uh, liability? Uh, check with legal and your insurance on coverage, your covered liability wise. Um, and no, the, the high school swim team is the main user of that room. And these modifications would impact anybody else. Maybe she can paint our bathrooms too. <laughs> <laughs> what are the, uh, I'm sorry, I missed this. What are you, what are the hours and days that you're planning to do this? I would mostly be working the Saturday and Sundays over the next three weekends, okay. uh, nothing during the week. And there would be nothing that would be objecting or prohibiting the community members from using the pool. There would be no obstruction to them. And then the equipment in that room, are you going to need a storage place while you fix up the room? No. And then, are you doing any structural modifications? Okay. You don't want to blow out the wall or anything? <laughs> Retile the bathroom? Yeah. Retile, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I think, I, I think this, this makes sense. I think the, the question um, that I would have to management on this is, what do you need from the board on this? Is it a direction to that we're okay, we're not okay with moving forward, or do you need a formal vote? No, just direction that you're okay with us moving forward with this. Okay. And then I'll get her in touch okay. with you. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think it's great. I mean, we'll always take free projects. Um, so the, big, the biggest thing for me is understanding that that obviously there's no financial real impact to the, the homeowners association because of this. It sounds like the amenity is not going to be impacted from it's not going to be uh, closed at any point in time, so sort of thing. Um, the one question that I would have is is regards to access that would be coordinated. With, with Nikki. With Nikki? Okay. Yeah, well, we have a, a monitor on site on Saturdays and Sundays, and then we and we have a morning and evening ship for maintenance, so we'll have somebody available. Okay, perfect. We're all, we're all in line. Good. Good. I think so. Good. That's great. Good. One stone. Jared, Don, you good? Yep. I'm good. 10-4. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. All right, Isabel, come on down. Good evening. Hi. All right, so Stephanie did a great job. Oh, I'm Isabel Sanders. I'm also a senior at Celebration High School. Um, Stephanie did a great job of explaining what IB and like CAS is, so I don't want to re explain that, it'd be very redundant. So I'm just going to go right in with my CAS project idea. So mine is um, if you've never heard about these are called little free libraries or take a book, leave a book sections. Um, I did provide some real world examples from actually my summer trip. And then the two on the right and the left are just like from the internet inspiration, the, the idea. So the top and the bottom are for my trip. There's one in a hotel lobby and there's one on a walking path. Pretty much what they are is they're little like nooks, bookshelves, little boxes that you can exchange books at your leisure. Um, adult child like it ranges in all books and so my idea for my cash project i really like reading i grew up reading i've been reading my whole life and i wanted to implement these sort of boxes um inside the pools because number one it is um faded access they're under covering so they wouldn't be exposed to you know the weather the elements or like they are safe and keep so you know at night they're not being ravaged about or whatever might happen and they're small and I, for my size idea, I was um, thinking like the, if you're familiar with the Celebration uh, magazine boxes, like mm -hmm. no, no taller than that, no wider than that, like about that size. And they would just be for the community to come at their leisure because I know by the pool I like to read books and I feel like it'd be awesome. Like if you see something interesting, you can come switch it out. So I do have some, here are my three books I was thinking of. I feel like doing all of them would be very a large project, so I want to start small with three and see where that goes. So I do have Lakeside Pool. There is a spot inside these gates. I do not know if those are accessible. I feel like those would be very safe. So I just drew some blue lines for an example. I don't know what the actual code is on those. And then there is those shelves on either side of the rooms, like Stephanie's room, the coach's room. They are not very large, but I feel like a shelf would fit better in the Lakeside Pool. And then Heritage Hall and North Village both have those indoor covered areas. And they can be put by the trash can under those little nooks. Yeah. Um, so you want to do it in where the pool is? Yes. Like, for example, North Village, you have like the bathroom area where they have the trash cans and the. But so, like, not in the, in the pool area. Oh, no, no, no. 
Okay. Like under the so then at Lakeside, it would be probably by where the Jones room is. Or do you want it inside the gate? Inside, inside the, gate. the gate. So it would be like protected. She wants it inside the pool gates, but under the covered area. Okay. I don't. Like, I think it's a good. Oh, yeah. I, I understand. This, yeah. this has been on my mind forever because I, I, I've i seen them in other yeah. areas. Obviously, like, the I examples just are feel fun. like the. For some reason, and I'll be the, you know, I'll, I feel like the books will land up in the pool if they're <laughs> in the pool area. Maybe outside where the Jones room is, and a perfect example is where the magazine rack is yeah, I feel like for the magazines. Sense. But does that have to go through ARC to get an approval to do something like that? So I think, so some of this, the, the, the questions, so, and in the effort of disclosure, I am personal friends of the Sanders, and this is their daughter. <laughs> we'll get that out there now. I think um, this is a great idea. But I'm not going to be easy on you. So, uh, the, is, are the boxes that you're proposing, are they going to be physically attached to a structure? No. Or are they going to be freestanding? Okay. So, if they're freestanding and we put them in the pool and the books end up in the pool, we can move the box. We can move the, the little library somewhere else. Okay. Um, so, I think that. That, that makes sense. Um, same questions that I had before uh, for, for Stephanie. Um, so are you looking for any uh, fees or materials costs or anything like that from the, the way? It's not far enough anything. I, like, I will um, ask like other um, foundations or something around celebration, but not the whole thing. Got it. Okay. So I think um, this one is a little bit a little bit trickier because it's a physical item that's 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 out and, and post. What I would propose is that whatever object you're looking to to do, so whether that's a you know magazine rack style or like a bookshelf even, even as simple as that sounds, I think that we would just essentially want ARC to have a look at it. And I'm not saying that they're approving it or they're doing it, but similar to like what we do with other structures around the community, where we kind of get them to put eyes on it and weigh in. Uh, mainly, they're going to want to make sure that you're not painting it neon purple with polka dots on the side and a giant, you know, logo on the on, on something. So I think, you know, getting them to be able to look at the aesthetics point of view of this um, works fine. Can many... I help? Can I? Can I? Can I? No, no, not can no. I help? No, like no. <laughs> so. Like we have the the magazine stand that the magazines go in. Like, can we give her three of them and she could decorate because they're already celebration approved green and she can cover where whatever it says on there and the books will be protected in there and, and people will still be able to see it. Isn't that CJC property technically? So I think, and, I, and I mean, again, she, I think some it, of the logistics of this, I think I'm fine. I, I think what we're looking for tonight yeah. is understanding if the project, if we're okay with the idea. Yeah, it's great. Um, and so, and I think the details of which, whatever it is, whether we look at a recycled magazine rack, whether you come up with something different or something like that, um, we would just, that's to work out between management, and whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right so there's, there. there's, there's some ideas. And we never know, you know, in your discussions with other organizations in the community, they might have something. They're like, we have this old thing that we're not on it. Um, and so I think that that would be where, you know, you know, uh, Isabel would work with management um, to, to come up with something to, to, to work on that, both for the final recommended placement of it and then also for the object itself. Good. Everyone good? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. All right. Thank good to go. Thank Perfect. You. Thanks for coming around. Thank you, Thank you as well. <laughs> What? Why can't I? Can't just Celia will be texting you her phone number. Shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Celia is now taking on yeah. magazine distribution. Back, magazine. Yeah. She likes painting too. Yes. Doesn't have anything to do after March. Yeah. I need to help. <laughs> All right. Motion to approve the use of Pigside Park by Commissioner Chowdhury. I'll make a motion to deny the application. I'll second. Right, we have a motion to deny the application by Jared, second from Andrew. Discussion. Do you want to kick this off with why we're here and how this got to this point? So this got 
to us in between Parks and Rec committee meetings and because of the timing of the event, we needed to get um, an answer to her. The committee has been communicating via email. It's their feeling in summary is if we do allow this, that she should not pay fees for the event. Um, there were some concerns about the wear and tear on the facilities because it's a lot of non-residents could potentially be coming into town. Uh, to Lakeside, um, so it's kind of a split on whether we should allow it or not. So I guess my my thoughts on this were this is considered a political political campaign, and Crow should always be unbiased. So if you want to do an event on our place, you got to period, no exceptions. Um, I don't. I'm. Uh, is the motion to approve the waiver or the motion to deny the event? The motion is to deny the event. Okay, so then that's fine. Oh, well, I guess um, if, if they want to pay for it and, oh. and do it, I'm fine. With so you that. want? But so I'm you, not giving them a waiver so they can get it for free. Right, but in in reality, so if they have the event, it could be. 100 plus people from all over Osceola County. Um, a couple of committee members have mentioned that they don't even want to do the event. That's how I read the emails correctly. We have parking as an issue. The lakeside parking lot are for the residents. Um, the bathrooms are the residents. Um, I don't know if they have a safety plan in we don't place. Have a safety plan. Not yet. Okay. Um, staff, we're talking about budget tonight, and we're talking about staffing um, our events, and this could turn into 500 to 1,000 people at Lakeside, and I have a problem with opening our individual amenity to something that she could probably get anywhere in Osceola County for free that isn't part of an HOA amenity. What's the total that we would be if we approved? We're talking significant. This is not like an hour. I saw five hours of staff time, I thought. Yeah, it wouldn't be. Uh, so, and I, so I think, so just for, for clarity, because feedback had provided at a previous meeting that sometimes we're discussing something that isn't completely disclosed to the audience. So I just want to read what the description of the event application is. And it's Can you a, bring it up, Lauren? Uh, Commissioner Chowdhury presents Osceola County Commission, County Community Outreach and Resources Day. Several county departments, local constituents, the Salvation Army of Osceola, and Massa Fund will participate as table vendors to provide information, resources, and free incentives to attendees. To me, this is very similar to it's a little bit of a blend with what happens when we work with experienced Kissimmee, but it's without the fun part. Um, it's just the information part, so it's not necessarily like a, 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 a large event. Um, I, I, I struggle with... A, you don't think it's a large event? It's 100 plus Oh, no, I think it's a large children, event. Yeah. I think what I'm saying is, is that sometimes if we want to have vendors or community outreach or we have, we have you know, politicians show up or, or different things like that for these larger events, but it's because it's with something else like you know, 4th of July, or it's the um, the dog thing, the pups and pups, pups and pints, you know, that sort of stuff. This, to me, is a different feeling. Because when I first read this, I thought that this was more like a pups and pints type thing. Yeah. But this isn't. Uh, this, is, this is something very different to me. Yeah. And I guess that's where maybe the request for just the normal fee is inappropriate here, because this is going to be a lot of all of Osceola County. So there's other things that need to be taken into account that maybe it should be 10, 15, 20,000 if they want to do it. And, and again, I mean, when, when what's the date? Uh, September, nine. September 7th. So it's less than a month out. Yeah. There's, what? you know, I don't have a problem with Embrace Celebration does their fundraising at Lakeside in November, they take everything. Foundation does fundraisings. They don't have any political affiliation for anything. It's to raise money 
for the community and uh, outreach. I'm sorry, but it's just the timing. I'm sorry, I'm speaking as a board member. I, I, I don't feel comfortable with this. So, uh, has his hand up. Oh, who does? Don. Oh, sorry. hey, Don. I already, I already asked. Thank you. I forgot to okay. undo my hand. All right. So I think I think we're all in alignment on this. Jerry, do you have anything to add? Because I'm I'm going to call the question. No. Yeah. I was just going to say call the vote. All right. So we have a motion to just deny outright the event, not the waiver. Motion to deny the use of Lakeside Park by Commissioner Chaudhry, made by Jared, seconded by Andrew. Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right. Thank you. Great. All right. Next, motion to approve the new playground landscape at Spring Park by Exquisite Lawn Care in the amount of $25,860 from Pro Reserve Funds. Do we have a motion? motion to approve. I'll second. Motion from Jared, second from Celia. Discussion? You want to give any, any, any anything of. Uh, so they're choosing plants that will be large and bushy. And then in addition to that, because of the difficulty that it would be to fence in the entire playground. We're going to use some hedges to that corral the playground. So there's limited ways you can enter the playground. It'll also provide a safety barrier for where people are coming out of slides and on the swings. So it will point residents to enter areas. Has Albert looked at any of the? Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Brian was talking to Albert when he was coming up with one. On board with. Yeah. So I think so. Here's 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 my question, um, and I'm, I'm struggling with this because it's 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 one vendor that we have to do this work. We are struggling right now with this vendor and maintaining some of the areas that we currently have him under contract with. I'm I, I'm I think it makes sense. Obviously, they do really good install work. But the maintenance has been lacking. I mean, I think we can all agree that there's there's struggles that we have there. So I'm I'm, I'm hard, it's I understand it's two different flavors. This is more installation rather than maintenance. But I'm struggling with throwing someone more work when we're having a problem with the current vendor. I was actually I was going to ask. Um, I noticed this was on the workshop agenda instead mm -hmm. of the board meeting, and I was I and there was only one bid. In my mind, I was assuming it was a timing issue. Is yeah. if you yeah. are we able to get multiple bit, bits in time, or is there like a specific reason why we just got one for Brian? Yeah, we had this discussion last year, so yeah, yeah. I mean, but. so we tried to reach out to other vendors to get bids, they weren't being for, responsive for this, for this. yeah, okay, uh, they weren't being responsive. Number one, number two, we wanted to get the landscaping installed done before the park opening. Otherwise, you're just going to have dirt around the new playground. So the. Sorry, no, 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 I, was just... uh, I, I think the, the the piece. So the piece that we discussed, well, the piece of the previous board had discussed when we looked at this originally, the scope of the landscaping was very different at the time because there was more area that was being covered by artificial surface. Having just been out there, there's a significant amount of area that's not going to be covered by artificial surface. Is the intention to plant that area or is the intention to mulch that area? It's a bit of both. So it's going to look more like a natural area, a natural preserve area. They're going to use ginger and other larger plants that will fill up and fill out the area. Um, and they will put mulch in there as well. Okay. I think that's why they wanted to take the ginger from that's the uh, uh, service areas to put. Yeah. They're already grown. Yeah, I, I think so. Like looking at the layout there, and I understand we're backing up against a timing issue, but it's we're hemorrhaging a lot of cash with landscaping right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, I'm trying to look at this, and I'm guilty of it. I voted for mulch. Um, but I think the. I'm okay with this moving forward, but I think that we need to really make sure that we understand that we're concerned in regards to the maintenance and longevity overall of our relationship. At least I am concerned with that, as well as 
I'm, I'm worried. I think this number is low. I think this for the amount of work that needs to be done out there, it's not clear to me what top line is going to be doing as part of their remediation and what's going to be covered under here under under what Brian will be doing. And what I don't want to have happen is Brian to start work and then top line go, oh, okay, they're going to handle the landscaping. I think in our contract it says yeah. that we that top line was not responsible. They're doing inside the barrier. For landscaping. Right? Yeah. And then yeah. landscaping is outside that, the barrier. That would be additional. So then the biggest area that we need to fix out there right now is outside the barrier. It's located where the dumpsters are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that part of this dumpster area is not part of it's this? It's not. Right. That so would that probably grass. be part of the front area here. That's really bad. Yeah. That's so we had in the I believe there was a provision in the agreement that it stated that we wanted to protect the surfaces, including the sidewalks, that sort of thing. There's one out there that is damaged. That, okay. that yeah, a sidewalk that is going to need to be fixed. So that I think is crystal clear on on top mm -hmm. line that they're going to need to take care of. But I, I am worried about the landscaping issue because we've kind of we've given landscaping a little bit of a pass in the area right now because we know there's construction going on but we need when we open the playground we have to be prepared that it can't the playground itself can't just look good it's got to be at thing. least the whole thing we're not going to have the front lawn here figured out but at least around the playground that's all going to be figured out and so i think to me we just need to understand exactly what I want to make sure there's no overlap in what this proposal is and what top line is doing. So this proposal, so if you're if you looked out there today, you see the black barrier. Yep. That's going to be the edge of the artificial turf. Yep. This proposal is doing hedges around the front that's going to take the place of the bike rack of when you enter from Celebration Avenue. Okay. Extending the hedge that comes off the back by the pool equipment mm -hmm. and bringing it around towards the where the black barrier comes to the sidewalk on the back side of the playground and then everything between that hedge and this hedge on this side of the playground is covered by this so it's the it's the back landscaping so it's currently where where the old zip line used yeah, to be right. with with the thing and okay from a scheduling purpose though if we do approve it today, they shouldn't be doing any work until all the inspections for the playground is complete. Because the last thing I want is for them to bring more forklifts and things in to fix some stuff with the playground. I think we would need to stipulate that. Yeah. Well, I think we should. Anyway. But that's that's not getting repaired. That part where the dumpster is and where they go in now, that's not getting repaired, correct? Not on this. Not in this. Not on this. So this is this. That's got nothing to do with this. Well, if they have if, to go back they need into to go somewhere else for anything, or they need to have other equipment, redo the turf or something like that. I don't want them knocking down bushes we just put in. Right. But this, it will be part of this. This the opening will still be there, correct? Mm -hmm. The opening will still be there. Yeah. I guess then you're risking having a small opening where then they're going to be driving a truck across our whole turf, and they could be doing more damage than if they went around the other side. Of it. I think he's just saying he wants to wait and everything and the inspections pass before we. Do the landscape. And I look at it as a two step. Finish the playground, yep. then we do landscaping. It's not that the landscaping needs to be done before the playground's done. Yeah, we I should agree. be 100% yep. done with the playground, then we put the cosmetic landscaping on top of it, Agreed. then that park's done. Agreed. And I think there's even question for the board. There are some comments, I think, from owners, so I don't know if oh, I want to yeah. over yeah. it up to you. Yeah. Well, of um, Robert State and Five Long History, um, I shot Katie a message earlier. I walked over to Savannah Square earlier. And obviously, as you know, they're in the process of uh, redoing Savannah Square. Um, I posted a few weeks ago the pictures that they started and cleared it all out. Beginning of last week, all the plants arrived. A lot of plants arrived. I walked around there today, and there's at least 40% of the plants that haven't been planted that are just thrown in a pile that haven't been watered for over a week and it's 100 degrees outside. I think you guys need to just consider the start another landscaping project, another one and another one. In the contract with Exquisite, it said they were going to be finished within a week. 
we're now two weeks into it, you're going to end up with them planting dead plants because they've dried out. And then in a few months of time, all us residents are going to be saying, these plants that and I I don't like this but if we delay the landscape overall I think we need to be prepared to delay the opening of a playground mm -hmm. if it means that we come back because we could very easily be having the same conversation at the board meeting well here's the thing uh, like I look at two ways I don't think we should delay the opening of the playground right. like that. you know um, since it's been so long but what what um what robert said is if we um even the way it sounds like savannah's going there's really no guarantee it would be done if they have other projects still waiting in line so maybe should we look at other options for this specific i think that project so i think the issue is we don't think we're going to get so it is it's exquisite what maintenance has there been no maintenance in the playground, right? But they're under contract technically to maintain the playground. Who who actually owns the contract for the maintenance? Because it does all your parks now. So but conceivably, so this was not put out to three vendors because they maintain the park, correct? Right. That's also we did request other bids, but other who declined to quote? Uh White Oaks and um I can't remember what the other one was. Um, no. What was the review? They have a reason. They just don't think they're going to get awarded the bid. They don't think they're going to get awarded the bid. Yeah. And I would agree with them. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I think you look at our right. That's the yeah. challenge. Yeah. That's, that's not a good. So I, I think so. Here's I guess here's the question that I'll have for you, Lauren. If we decide to table this, or well, we can't. Well, we would need to resend since we're in discussion right now. But I think the. The question that I would have is what would would what could we potentially change between now and the board meeting? Is I'll work to get additional bids and Brian will be here to discuss his existing. So I think I think to me, I would be more comfortable with this if we ensure that there's we essentially need to make sure that it's going to be done right and it's going to be installed correctly. And we need some teeth in the contract that that states that. And on time. And 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 and, and a timing and a timing. Like if stuff is still like, um, if Savannah was supposed to be done in five days and it's still not done, like that's an issue we don't want to see here. Do we know why it's not complete yet, Savannah? We had a reason. I just can't recall it. So I guess two things, two things. One is this bit's incomplete from our conversation here that it doesn't take into account where the dumpster is. So that needs to be brought into scope for this. Um, yeah, should be. And then two is if we do push it back, is there a risk that when we buy these plans, it's out that they're not going to get it in time? They'll be sitting as well. I'm also worried. I don't want to go into like a procurement conversation, but we've got Winter Garden, Windermere, Lakeland, Orlando, Altima, there's a large network of vendors out there. And I'm just worried that we're not casting a large enough net for projects like these. We have a, obviously a captive audience with Exquisite, but to your point, I think that can hurt us. And I think this is an opportunity to look at this a little bit differently. If we have a little bit, not a lot of time, do we want to just put this back out to bid again? 
with a better scope. So as we talked about with a larger so we have the playground opening in a month, hopefully. Are what we gonna still over the playground with no landscape? Still don't look good. I mean, I think it doesn't look good. And, and I, I think that there's that we're installing some of the landscaping for a safety thing. We're trying to use it as a barrier. But I think the other reality of the matter is, is that my kid's going to run through the bush whether the bush is there or not. Um, so, uh, you know. Is it just going to be mud? Like, is it just going to be dirt uh, there when the playground opens? But you still want it to fit out. Oh, uh, right. right. And I want, like, again, here we have a playground and, and no lands. And yeah, but no, just like not open because we're waiting on bushes. I mean, yeah. yeah. If it's safe to you, if it passes inspection, the bushes come. You yeah. know, like when you move into a house, it's brand new. The landscaping's not finished yet, but sure. you're moving in. Yeah. Well, we don't want the kids tracking mud from that area onto that brand new turf. Yeah, uh, they're going to do it from the front. Why end. don't we? Why don't? Uh, pardon me. Uh, why don't we? Uh, the, the whole issue of of fixing exquisite and getting other bids and all of these things sound great. For a project where we have a, a bigger timeline, a greater timeline, we we promised that playground would be done. I think say we just bite the bullet, make sure that in the contract it says it must be done by X. If not, X amount of money is subtracted for every day, and just get it done. Let's let's try to find some solutions to this problem later. But right now we promised that playground, and if we don't follow through on that. We look terrible. Okay, I do have a, I do have a motion on the table. So do we want to call the question on the motion? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion from Jared and second from Andrew. Um, uh, okay. To a, was it to approve? Yeah. Approve. Yep. Okay. All right. So motion yeah. to approve playground yeah. landscape and park bikes with the lawn care and the amount of twenty five thousand eight sixty from Pro Reserve funds. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm opposed. All right, so Eric and I are opposed. Passes five two. I just want to make it spicy in the minutes. So, <laughs> so like that's so yeah, yeah. the first time in ages we've been spicy. And yeah. yeah, so and All right, five two. Good to go. Perfect. All right, budget. We have an hour and twenty four minutes to talk budget. So it's the fun part. Where are you guys going? Hey, <laughs> Like we're out. Thank you for being here. Rolling Thank you. back in their head. All right. Um, how do we want to kick this off, Jennifer, Lauren? Do you want to? Is this this is going to be the line by line review of this? Or so we're not really ready for line by line review. We can probably do an overview. Do you want to do an overview of what the finance committee talked about yesterday? Yeah, let's start with big picture. Does yeah, I mean, well. Yeah, I mean, I think so. The finance committee yesterday went through all the different tabs and walked through things, had some questions. So I think tonight, what I think we should do is ask all questions and get all asked that we have. I already submitted a couple of asks to Lauren and Jennifer on what I saw. Um, there was some, I guess the biggest thing from yesterday was about the estimated lots. So uh, we currently have, is it 40, 4566? Uh, and then with Island Village, there's section 2A, which is 87. That is expected in October 24th and October this year. And then another 252 in November 2024. Now, I think there needs to be further discussion because I'm not sold that these are going in. Yes. Madame's marketing person has spoken with the finance chair and some others that said this is the plan, but just looking at some macroeconomic trends. So uh, just Madame's fourth quarter results, their revenues were down about 0.4%. New sale orders had decreased 14.5% from the prior quarter. Uh, sale order backlog decreased almost 10%. Um, the Orlando area across the nation had the highest canceled sales this past in June. Um, unemployment has gone from 3.4 to 4.3. So as we move forward, I understand Madame wants to do this this year. And 
Personally, I'm comfortable with the 87 number for 2A, but I think there needs to be further discussion on 2B of the 252 regarding what type of houses are and what that's going to be in the market because 34747 is one of the worst performing sectors of the Orlando area as far as uh, aged inventory, number of sales out there, how long they're taking to the sell, everything else. So. I'm not comfortable taking the aggressive approach of Anime's marketing department saying we're going to do this without understanding that in September, I'm expecting the Fed do their first rate reduction. And as unemployment continues to rise, then I think that you kind of see the, the writing on the tea leaves of what 2025 might bring us. So I think if we include all of it, that's extremely aggressive. And yes, it makes the numbers look a lot easier because you're taking a whole number of people through, but I think we may want to be more conservative on that. So my recommendation is right now, let's just include the 87, know that the 252 is up for further discussion and we can use that to decrease the overall cost per house, but look at it from that perspective so that as we go through things and we're difficult on different areas, even if we don't get to what is our potential targeted number, we still have that lever to adjust in, in trying to get to a reasonable increase for the homeowners this year. So, so can, you can we, they're not going to pull the plats or you don't think the homes are going to sell? Yes. Can, a combination of both. Can we also? Because the they as soon as they start, as soon as they pull the plats, Mattamy starts paying us dues. Right. So I'm saying I think I think it's a near certainty that the 87, 87 gets pulled. Yeah. And, and I think the denominator, I, I want to talk about the numerator too. Like what, I mean, obviously the per house is important, but like what's obviously feeding into it, but do you want to? Yeah, I mean, pulling plats is simply that way they can start getting approved from outside of the county. So now again, phase one sold out very quickly, except for the outer rim, which are all million five to 2.5 million dollars. Each of them sold very quickly. There are four left. That's it. So they already have a long list of people looking at phase two and interested in it. And this is coming from the executive director of marketing who confirmed that they were going to pull all of these plats this year. Now we can have further discussion. Now, the only other thing I want to add here is I think this is premature for we're talking about the budget at this point, only because we only got, the finance committee only got the, the first real budget Monday night. We had a meeting on Tuesday, so we're just getting started in the process. So if you want to talk about staffing and things like that, but I think going through the budget right now is very premature because we went back to the brand managers and asked them to look up a bunch of stuff and prepare some of the things which they have on the plate. So I really do believe it's a little bit early for the board to be discussing line items or categories of the budget until the finance committee has a chance to really go through it in detail. To me, that makes perfect sense. It, 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 we should we can look at the big picture, but to get into individual line items is getting way ahead of the the uh, the process. So I I think in that spirit, I, I would almost want to look at where we're at now, because I think that's where I'm a little worried. Um, we look at our current budget because we know that we have we're we're we're, we're spending money. And I think it, we know that we need to in order to be able to we have a lot of things that have been put off from a reserve perspective that we're looking at trying to complete. But we also have maintenance and different things that are coming up that we're trying to correct. And so I know like we're already pretty well exceeded some some of the areas when I looked at you know things like where we were expected to be year to date. I assume that that trend isn't going to slow down between now and the end of the year. Like we're going to have. We're going to be over in some of these categories, like at year end, correct? Yeah, and I guess in 2024, I think we're going to have some more difficult conversations of putting almost an expense freeze on certain areas that even if you want to do something, you can't. Just because if we do, we're just going to go so far beyond the budget that it could get potentially dangerous. And, and I think the, the piece when we do that is that's going to impact our ability to whether or not it gets included in 25. 
And so it could be frozen potentially for two years or longer, you know, until we until we have something in those areas. And I think that that's where I start to worry because the levers that we need to be able to pull in order to be able to make a gradual change for the community from a funding perspective kind of need to happen earlier, not later. So in other words, if we're looking at, and I think this is where we need a dialogue to understand the appetite now, but when we start to get into line items, you know, at a later date, we have more information, those sort of things, where we're going to need to either look at raising dues, you know, for it is, or you have to say, are you going down a special assessment route? I think even if we were to make cuts to certain areas of this, or we were to say that we weren't going to do some things, we're still going to be in the same boat. We're going to need to look at some level of increase. I think what you said is obviously two of the options, but also like there is a third option our bylaws give us too that we could potentially discuss at the as a board now as well too, and that is the capital assessment fees. That the apartment. Hmm. The apartment. No, no, that um. The buyer play, pays at closing one year worth of annual dues. Um, two, you, we could discuss changing that. Of course, it would require a community vote, so that way the community also gets a say. Um, but that is a way to raise capital um, for a lot of these projects. So, yeah, along capital along and operating, things. I think we're talking. But along those lines, there's a $500,000 capital contribution expected from homeowners in the current budget. So what Katie is saying is, and my personal view would be a half a percent on the sale price of homes, or so it'd be the greater of a half percent of the sale price of the home or one annual assessment. So that way we have a floor on the minimum we're going to get. And if we have between 200 million and 300 million in sales in celebration, which in 2021 it was 235 million, uh, in 2022 it was 275 million. That if we use the 200 to 300 million, that would bring in uh, a million to a million and a half of capital improvement assessment reserves for that. So then technically, well, but 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 wait, five. what do you, what 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 was the number for 2023, and how many houses are on the market? In 2024, those those older numbers look uh, are likely to look a lot different going forward. There aren't a lot of houses on the market. I, I think we're straying a little from trying to toss the operating fund day to day expenses. The capital fund is great. We obviously need to be mindful of that, but it sounds like we need to be thinking about where we're running hot for 2024 and how that's going to hear you and how that's going to. Like, what do we need to tighten up now going yep. into that? Again, I think the capital, that's a very different conversation with the vote. And well, I guess the downstream impacts with others. I get the operating, we can get into operating more through the conversation, but I think it's important to have up front that we're either going to be raising dues because we need homeowners to pay the capital improvement fund, or you're going to put this stipulation into the capital improvement assessment to cover them. So then we don't have to raise the assessments for that piece of it. Then we can focus back on the operating and look at where everything is. And this was discussed last night at the finance. Yeah. There's also nothing saying that you have to make that additional. I know in an ideal world you would, but there's nothing saying that you have to add that additional 500000 to the capital contribution above and beyond the resale contribution. Right, but I guess I'm saying the current trajectory of that capital assessment improvement is insufficient for celebration. We need more money if we're going to support anything that the master plan advisory group puts forward. Well, and I would, I would almost. Here's, here's my problem when I look at the budget today. Jared's got a hand up too. Oh, sorry, Jared. I was just going to say, have, have, have. Do we have recommendations from the finance committee? Because typically, at this point, a lot of this would come from recommendations, and we would be discussing the recommendations rather than a lot of the conjecture. Is there a recommendation Great from point. finance on this? Yeah, they're, they're going to take it back and have something later in the month on, on what their true recommendation is, because it was kicked around of, do you just double it? Do you do a percentage? What What is the framework? So that is truly still being workshopped by that committee. Nothing formal is, is being proposed yet. So you want to do a percentage of new buyers coming into the community. So 
So say somebody spends $400,000 on a condo, the person buying the condo has to pay a half a percent. So what is that added to the bill now? A half a percent of the, the total sale. 400 is about 2,000. Yes. So if you're How looking much? at a $900,000 house, that can hurt that can hurt somebody's pocket if they have to add that much more. A million dollars would be five thousand. A half a million dollars. And that can hurt somebody's pocket. That do you want to hurt your current pocket of homeowners, or do you want to put it on a transactional basis? No, That's the I, question of what you need to do. You know what? We okay. need to. But, 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 I think but here again, this is a conversation that seems to be very premature. Given that one, we have no recommendation from the finance committee to right. any effect whatsoever. I think we're way ahead of ourselves so, in this entire discussion. So I, I agree. agree. I, I agree, and I think we do this too. So why are we here? I guess that's we don't know. I, I thought I thought Great this was question. Long time, I don't. We met for the first time last night. Yeah, they met for the first Fabulous. time. Fabulous. Great. We got one whole meeting on the right now. Awesome. Table it. I move that we table this whole discussion. I second that. I'll third it. There's not even not even a need to all the votes on it. It's a discussion. All right. So that's it. So where so where do we go from here? The finance committee is going to meet. Do your thing. All right. So again next week. All right. So when do we get back together? What are the next steps? September meeting. September workshop. Okay. And is that? There's a motion on the table now. There's a motion to table, which means technically there's no more discussion. But I have a, a big question on what are we asking the finance committee to do? What is the recommendation to the committee to do? To provide us guidance on where our budget for 2025 uh, needs, where the holes need to be filled, what holes are there, and how we can fund those holes. Can we can, can you relook at the apartments, please? The apartment fees? Yeah. If you see there, they're going way up. Yeah. Well, that's because, because, because it's a bucket. There are different buckets of costs that we can do with the apartment fees. Because our expenses and those fees have been in the floor and gotten up significantly. The apartment fees. That's good. So, so but let's map out at least. We're just, so finance committee's meeting. We're going to get together in September. Is there any other intermediate we need to get together and have discussions? I know the reserve studies also. You guys are doing all that simultaneously. I mean, I thought it'd be important for you guys to see what's out there and know stuff. But if you guys do not, and you're just going to kick it off and say you're going to look at it for the first time in September, so be it. That's fine. But I thought you guys would want some early transparency to know where the numbers are, where the starting point is. So then when finance comes back with a recommendation of all the different cuts and changes they made, you understand where we started on here's it was 16.8%, I think, originally. And when they get down to whatever number it is, you I, guys you guys could see that. I want to respond to what you just said because I don't want to look at these numbers with ignorance, like 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 you just uh, insinuated, but I also want the expert the expert opinions from these on the finance committee. We have CFOs and CEOs on this committee that really need to be advising this as far as what we need to be looking at. And if they haven't looked at this and gone through it and given us opinions, no, I don't want to waste our time doing that without their recommendations and their advice. So and to Jared's point, the, the fact the, of the matter is we are we 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 have set up committees to advise us so that we can make intelligent decisions based on their intelligent input. And we don't have any intelligent input from them yet. So September's workshop is a joint meeting with the Corolla Board and the Finance Committee. It is? I think it needs to be now. Yeah. I think that's I fine. agree. Yep. Is that going to be on the Thursday, I think we moved it to, instead of Wednesday that week? Yes. So the 12th. when is it going to be? The 12th. Second. Second. Your workshop was originally scheduled for September 11th. And just sort of acknowledge. Can we make it a different day beside the 12th? We Let's do it the 10th? So I think in spirit we're talking about, we can sort through that offline. But <laughs> so workshop. Well, we need to, I think 
it's hard to do it offline when we're not all in agreement with data. You're saying that we need the finance committee to look at this and pine, get together, right? Then we come back in September. When is their next meeting? Next week, Monday. Monday. They have Monday, and then uh, the following Tuesday is the monthly meeting. Okay, and then we go into September. Can we discuss it as part of our September workshop? That's Joint what, that's what we're talking about. On the eleventh. We're not talking about this. Yeah, why, why? I don't see the sensitivity. I mean, I get 9 11, but it's not a national holiday. Um, I don't see the sensitivity of that. All right, so backing into that, we do that, we have the workshop, then we vote on it in the October. So then you'll, at your September board meeting, you'll propose a budget to the community, it'll get mailed out to the community. Then you can have further discussion in October, and then end of October you're approving. Is that like I'm? Um, I was curious about that. The okay. Yeah, like, is that a mandatory approval at the end of October? Yeah, there's yeah. a statutory deadline. Okay. When is the reserve study expected? In? He said three weeks from Monday. I feel, like was, I feel like that was three weeks. We feel like we always ask. About I know. The well, they, their previous project got delayed. They were supposed to start in July. They, I just had, we just had the meeting with them on what Tuesday? Yes. Yeah, yesterday Tuesday. morning. And this is 2025 to 2030. This is a five year. No, it's always a third year. Oh, it's a third okay. Okay, so Andrew, to your point about raising dues, you want the new people, and we don't want to raise the dues, and us people that are already living here and. Eventually, we have to realize, just having conversation here, that every single thing in this community is old. And I think I spoke to my husband about it during lunch yesterday. I said, I'm trying to figure out the budget in, in my terms, Celia terms. So when, you, when you're 25 years old, you go in and get life insurance. It's a breeze doesn't cost anything for life insurance. You know, whole life term years ago you used to be able to get it. When you're when you're 65 years old and trying to get life insurance, it's like, no, you have this ailment, you have that ailment. Everything ages. This community is at its breaking point. So we need to we need to raise the deuce a little bit to fix what's broken in the community. The air conditions are going. The filters are gone. Mine will just fill in all the pools so we don't have a pool contract. Everything is is breaking down in the community like an oh, I hate to say the word old, like an old person. We need to pay to get these things done. And just because Somebody is moving into the community doesn't mean we're going to put the burden on them to pay for it. We're here as residents. There's residents that have been living here since day one. If we have to pay, we have to pay. I have thoughts, but the motion was the table, so I will refrain uh, from any further comment. All right. So there, there will be an increase of dues. That's a of question. Course. It's going to be five percent or fifteen percent. Right, yeah, Mr. Stitch. So that's. And the capital contribution is was even brought up in the master plan and advisory board, but that is for capital, major capital projects. Right. But it does help review because with that raising, then the, the residents don't have to take dues and fund as much to the capital. So the argument to increase the capital fund and the capital rate that goes. The argument is also to help reduce the dues of the residents in the future. It's twofold. Right. Uh, I, I personally um, agree that we're going to have to raise dues for maintenance. So you, I think that's spot on. But also, we've got to come up with a solution of raising money for new things. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to do new things. We all want to do new things, but we need a town hall. That's millions. And this budget, everything that you guys got a line item for everything to be renewed is done. What do you expect? And that's no criticism of you guys, it's just the way that everything's gone up. <laughs> and I think that we've really got to be open minded about having two things here. We've got to be charging people that want to come in. 
the homeowners, Disney, everybody did it when we all first moved in 20 years ago. They were all earning a bit out of the purchase price. Um, and we've got to look at our dues going up as well. But we've got to look at that there is an elderly community in town that are on a fixed income. And we've got to be considerate for them that we don't increase their dues so much that we end up losing half the community because they can't afford to live in. Now, they're not going to move if their dues aren't too high. Mm -hmm. But people that are moving that have had the benefit of house prices going up, if it costs them half a percent, half a percent, as Andrew said, 5,000 bucks on a, on a million dollar home, if you can't afford that, you shouldn't be buying a million dollar home. That should have been done back when celebration was first. There you go. It was, we did. But you can't do it now because that can hurt the sale of a house. John has it. Yeah, done. Yeah, yeah um, didn't we have a question on the table? The I table? mean, it's a discussion. I don't know. I don't. But some yeah, of but, I mean, but, but, but didn't we just? I mean, why are we discussing the possibility of adding fees on to new homes and I raising dues when we don't know anything? We're just we're just talking in circles. So do we need to call the, I mean, again, there's no, all right. So we have a motion to table from Jared, second from me. Seconded. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Aye. Six, one. Wait. Can you close to six, one? Table. All right. Then we have an hour. So is there any additional item? Is it over? We just adjourned. Get management updates. So I, I would yes, I, yes, and I, I think I, I would. To my knowledge, this is Jacob's first meeting. Welcome. Yay, Jacob! <laughs> Thanks for the eleventh meeting. <laughs> we'll do it on the eleventh. The eleventh. So we're still we haven't adjourned yet, correct? No. So I think the the only. The, the question that I do have as, as part of a workshop piece here is that we do need to understand. I think there were a couple of pieces that we want to be clear on with there's been identified concerns with landscaping maintenance mm -hmm. that we need to figure out and that likely going to be asking the question um, of that. And so I think that that would be the, the one piece that you just need to be prepared for. Let's bring Brian to the next meeting. He would have been here tonight, but he has an early surgery tomorrow. Yeah. No, let's bring him to the meeting, though, to address those questions. Can I ask a couple update questions? Sure. Any updates on the sunshades? I think we're at, what, we're at six to eight weeks out now. But have they, like, have they made any progress? Is, like, are they going to file the permits? Or hey, when, did, when do we have the last discussion? I thought it was two weeks ago. At the board meeting? Yeah. So you're two weeks down from the eight to ten. Have they got anything like engineer drawings or any? I haven't seen any. I think they're still waiting on the engineer drawings for the permits. Okay. They ordered the equipment and the engineer drawings. Um, eight fifty one. Have they? Is the contract signed and have they has sort of scheduled the walk? It's signed. I'm waiting for them to schedule. And um, did they do the walkthrough for the insurance? They did. I have to send the board an email about I just met with them today and they gave me an update. And um, so I say, oh, did Diane? No, Debbie, which is Debbie's top line. Diane is his project, project manager. manager. Yeah. OK, did she send you a copy of the RFP that she said she was going to be sending out? She for has not sent it to me yet. Okay. Should we ask for that? As a book, because she is working for us, mm -hmm. should we ask her for a copy yes. of do you I think, it, I think it's fine going through Lauren. I'll ask her. Send it to the whole board. Well, we've never seen her RFP either, so I, I agree. I think we need to get a is that for long meta? Yeah, for long Good. meta, yeah. But she can say on behalf of the board, yeah. they request the RFP, not any of us having to reach out. Okay. Um, any updates from legal on the recalled slide? Uh, no, they're still engaging in conversations, so they're not necessarily opposed to reimbursing for us having to do some of that work. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out what they reinstalled at Lakeside. I could have sworn one of her reports said 
they installed stuff. It was the climber on the right side of the larger one. Yeah. We have a resident comment. Yeah. Is it feasible to form a committee uh, of residents with no special interest to look into what we need, how to raise money, how to go around raising money, maybe put a survey out to send to the people and then give the answer back and forth. You know, we need this. There's no doubt the community is old. I think you said at one meeting that you would gladly, I think you said at one meeting, Paul, that you would gladly write a check for something. No, <laughs> no you said it. I said they'd write a check to cover the cost for the meeting. No, 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 no. Uh, for all the things. Yeah, but Paul, serious. Can you it out, though? Wasn't that the definition of the master plan advisory group? Yes. That's what you're doing? Yeah, to sort of go out there, let the, like, like tomorrow, uh, as you know, I'm pretty good at writing things. I'm going to go out there and say, look, people, we need this. Well, that's why we have the MPAC group, and they haven't given the board their final presentation yet. So, Sorry, what do yeah. you put together? So, I think, so yeah. I think, to, I think they're going to have a committee. Yeah, yeah. that's Eventually. going to be an ongoing yeah. committee. That Which I think we as a board have to approve that, but I think yeah. that's Arlene that they're not just going to disband. We're going to keep that in some form. Moving not the same people all the time, it's different people in the committee. The, most committees are two dozen people. And, you know, they go to the same, like on the Dog Park Committee, we've got one guy who's on two different committees. Hey, let's put some new blood out there. Oh, yeah. Who's on, Why are you going to be like that? Who's on, who's, who's on the dog park committee that's on two committees? The heavy set guy. Mark? Yes. Well, he, his committee's ready to be sunsetted next week. No, but I, I would love to have him on the committee, actually. So I think the, I, I think to, to your point, it's looking yeah, at it's, it's, it's it's cost the a, a combination of the, the what impact is doing is answering one half of the question. The other half of the question is how we actually do it. Yeah, I think that that's the piece that we need to figure out as a as a board. Yeah. What what's the implementation plan look like for that? Is that something that we then task um, a a special group for that we want to say here are the things that we have now we need to figure out how to go do this? How do we fund it? How do we time this out? Where does it all work? I think that that's something that once you know, we, we the the impact presentation and the, the recommendations we have, I know we have, we're getting some of the finalized pieces of our presentation for the community, but I think we're for the, for the board rather, but I think that we kind of know what's in it. You know, it's, it's, the it's, steering, yeah. a steering committee and then you get an implementation. Right. Yeah. Well, when we put the committee together, we did stay. Once they give the board the presentation, when we put the, the MPEG together and Jared, I don't know, oh, is he still on? I don't know. Yeah, yeah just here. We said that we were going to form a committee to, to make sure that everything that they recommend doesn't get lost like all the other surveys got lost and all the other recommendations, yeah, that they the, hold the board accountable moving forward. Part of the groups, one the, the last part of their charter is to, um, to, to define the requirements of a committee and how they hold the board accountable and keep on task to execute all of the things that they're recommending be executed. Within budgetary constraints. Right. Yes. I would hope. Uh, yeah. Which is not like we're going to be able to print That's it. Have all the so I, my guess is the MPEG list will amount to tens of millions of dollars, if not yeah. hundreds. Yes, but the, the and exactly, and the point of the committee that they would uh, recommend and how it would be structured and how it would meet would be instead of of how you know how we we do a study every five to seven years or three years or whatever it is a new master plan idea comes up every year and then people do the work and then nothing happens. This committee would be responsible with keeping the board on task. And maybe this committee says we can't spend money for two years, but then the next project is this. And then a year after that, the next project is that, and so that's what that committee's responsibility okay. is yeah. to keep. As long the, as it's not, as long as it's not some sort of new bitch at the board committee because we didn't do all the things on the list. No, it's just keeping the list moving forward for future okay. boards because I'm as just, boards I'm, turn I'm over, yeah, then the committees will say, "Don't forget, you need to do this. We promised the community we would do this. This is next." 
I promising the, that the, the, promising the community is a powerful thing, and it works with the park, I think. And that's why we've got to keep doing that. Yeah. I have a, so how is um, the move to the Bank of America? When is all that? It's done. It's, it's done. all done. It's all done. Everything went. They're really nice. It's really a nice space. I'm sorry. I invaded their privacy. I had to pick up papers, and I wanted to see what it looked like. And they have a nice staircase, so I didn't have to go in the elevator. It's a nice space. No hiccup with communications to residents, no. I mean, they're not coming and visiting us there. They're going to 690 and we're walking across the street. Um, we are looking at moving the staff to the, the front counter staff to the stick room. Uh, we're starting to wear out our welcome at 690. Um, so we're coming up with a communication plan for that. Our tentative date is looking for the opening the front counter and stick room the day after. What are we going to do with that $40,000 of equipment in the stick room? Oh. That story. It's, right. it's already, I know. it's been moved out and has been redistributed. So elsewhere. we still have it somewhere. Yeah, we're utilizing it now. Yeah. They're, all, they're using it. Uh, it's finally being, it's finally, you know, wonderful. it's finally being put to good use. Okay. For the uh, contract extension, have we gotten any signatures on that yet? It was sent to Stacy today. So and she signs it. It was just a free, yeah, it was the, the yeah, CJC meeting. Yeah. So it goes to her and then it goes to all of yeah. them. Okay. All right. Anything else? The world wouldn't end if we actually ended early. Motion to adjourn. Second. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Thanks.